Back here on The Herd, we have a great guest in studio. First time in studio. Oh, boy, here we go. He has gone from Aaron Rodgers to Patrick Mahomes, and now he's in Buffalo with Josh Allen. What a charmed life. Marquez Valdez Scandling in the building. How are you, my man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Now, I just learned, you know, we had all these battery of questions ready for him, and then I start talking to him. Uh, during the commercial break and I find out he was hanging out with Aaron Rodgers yesterday out here in LA so obviously this is breaking news for much of any, and the NFL audience tell us about it yeah I mean I guess um, <laughs> you know me and, me and Aaron been great friends since I've been in Green Bay um, you know, I hit him up tell him I was coming out to LA and so let's let's run some routes so we got it in and went out to some some high school uh, and, and ran some routes together so it was good it was good. Yeah, so all the New York media can stand down. Aaron Rodgers <laughs> is back from Egypt. It's not It's not a secret anymore, and he's hanging out uh, with MVS. I, I like the earring, by the way. It's MVS. He's got his own line of stuff, obviously, because he's a star. Uh, where do you want to start here? I mean, you go from Rodgers to Mahomes and now to Josh Allen. Like, that is as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm I'm grateful. You know, when I when I came out of college, I was like, man, I don't want to go anywhere cold. <laughs> um, and, and ended up in Green Bay. But I think that was the... The biggest blessing that I had, you know, obviously my four years there were were great. I got to learn from, you know, one of the best receivers to ever play this game in Devontae Adams. And then being able to to learn under guys like Randall Cobb it was huge. And obviously playing with Aaron, man, you know, you know that those are one of those situations that, you know, you dream of as a kid. You know, I, I grew up watching these guys play, you know, on Sunday night football and, you know, walk into the locker room. And my first day I see Aaron uh, Cobb and, and Devontae, you know, sitting at a table and, and Aaron calls me over, you know, and, and calls me by my name, you know. So that was one of those moments that I'll never forget um, and, and told me how much he, you know, admired my play and said I can help this team, you know. So those are probably moments that he doesn't even remember. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that was one of the things that just will stick with me forever. Yeah, so uh, you had a great run, obviously, with the Packers. Then you go to the Chiefs, and it's like, oh, well, he just won a Super Bowl. Hey, tell me how, first of all, Rodgers and Mahomes are different off the field and then in the huddle. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there are two different types of leaders. Um, you know, Pat's a lot more vocal, you know, rally the team. You know, Aaron's more, uh, you know, right in your face, um, you know, talk to you right in your face opposed to the whole team. He goes to each individual, um, and Pat addresses the whole team. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're both great at what they do. You know, they lead in different ways. They're both super competitive. Um, I think that's, you know, one of those things that between those two guys, you know, that's the, the biggest similarity into them. You know, obviously, the arm child and, you know, what they can do off schedule and the throws that they can make, um, but just the competitiveness that, that they both have, you know, um, I was grateful to have those two guys as my, my first I, two quarterbacks. I'm sure the numbers say one thing for deep ball accuracy, but for your money, uh, Rodgers or Mahomes, who was the better deep ball thrower for you? Man, I don't know. I think, um, you know, I think they both had different skill sets when it came to it. You know, obviously... I got Aaron in year, you know, 17. Yes. I got Pat in, in year six. Um, you know, so, you know, obviously, you know, Pat had a the stronger arm, you know, when it came to it. But, you know, Aaron was just so pinpoint with, with everything that he did, you know. So I think that the skill sets um, were just so different. But those two guys, man, it was it was great to be a part of that. Um, walk me through the Super Bowl against the Niners. I had 49ers winning. If 49ers were in total control, it felt like, to me at least. But I'm just curious. What, tell me about halftime. Because it seemed like you guys were kind of in trouble, especially third quarter. Mahomes throws the pick, and it's like, uh-oh, here we go. But uh, at halftime, was there any concern at all? Or is it, yeah, we've been here. Nah, man. I think, um, you know, the, the great teams that, you know, battled through adversity all year, um, it, was, it was no flinch out of us. You know, I, I knew that. You know, and we knew that we deserved to be there. Um, we knew that we just had to settle down and, and just play our game of football. And, you know, obviously we had been through ups and downs all year. And, you know, it was no different than the Super Bowl. And so that kind of prepared us, you know, for, for those moments and to never ever have to flinch. Coach Reed does a great job just preparing guys for all the situations and, and never be blindsided by the moment. Um, and so I'm forever grateful that I had a coach like that to kind of prepare the team in that manner. And, um, you know, it showed in the Super Bowl, showed in the last two Super Bowls. <laughs> you, you caught a touchdown pass, obviously. Just an in incredible comeback and victory for the Chiefs. I don't know. Take me through, like, the fourth quarter and overtime. Man, it was, uh, it was a crazy thing, man, because obviously, you know, we have to go down to, to tie that game um, you know, in the last quarter uh, right, before it, right before it ends. And then to go and 
watched them get the ball first, and you know they uh, decided to you know, say, "Hey, we'll take it first and leave us to figure it out after." Um, and then you know we just went and drove that field and and, and won the game. Um, I was you know a part of a couple of those calls to you know get us some first downs and you know, making some plays to, to help us get in that position. So it was a, it was a great experience, man. Well, is that, would you say to, to date highlight of your career? Uh... Um, nah, man, you know, obviously I think, you know, scoring the Super Bowl, a lot of guys can't say that they did that. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's been you know, monumental moments, um, you know, a part of my career, you know, even the, the struggles, you know, even the, the drop versus Philly in the season, I think that was, mm. you know, a big moment for me just to say, Hey man, you can still do this, you know, and, and, and shake back. Um, you know, so I think, you know, that was, that was a big moment, um, for me just to say, Hey man, you know, people are still going to count on you. Oh, so, so let's go back to that. The drop, um, if memory serves, it was like over right around like the, was it in the end zone? Yeah, it was right. Yeah, uh, that's right. Maybe two yard line or something like that. You know, it was a third down, I think a couple seconds left in the game. Um, you know, it was raining, you know, we got, you know, it was supposed to not rain that the whole day and we ended up getting rain the entire game. Um, you know, and then. You know, obviously that was a rematch from the Super Bowl the year before, and you know they counted on me to go make that play, and I didn't. Um, but you know I was able to kind of battle through that, man, and and get through you know those those sorrows and and keep going, man. I've you know I've never wavered. You know my faith always stayed high. You know I always believed in myself. My confidence never kind of dropped down. Uh, I knew I can go make a play, and then throughout the throughout the rest of the season, I just kept making those plays when they needed me. I gotta say that's pretty cool. Yeah, you man. brought that up. There's some people who don't want to talk about their lows. You nah, you man. brought that up, or I wasn't gonna ask about it. You yeah, no, nah, but... it's cool, man. Uh, it's all a part of my story, man. Um, you know, I never run from it. Um, you know, it made me you know who I am today. Um, you know, I, I battled through. We, we way know worse some things. athletes uh, these days have the rabbit ears. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, Kevin Durant in the NBA. Like, you'll say something about him online, he'll come and find you and DM you <laughs> and get all of it. In the NFL, a little less so, but there's some of that. There's some punching back. Um, how are you handling social media after like a game like the Eagles game? Man, it don't bother me, man. Uh, I'm from the south side of St. Petersburg, Florida, man. I, I've seen way worse things in, in real life, you know. So anybody behind behind a camera or you know hide behind their phone to say whatever they got to say, you know, to make themselves feel better from their mom's basement or you know the you know their their work office internet, um, it's cool, man. You know, I, I love the passion that y'all you know fans have, uh, but you know we are still people, you know, but. At the end of the day, man, it, it don't bother me. Have you had any teammates who you've seen struggle with it? I, I'm, listen, I've worked with people who they can't handle it when people yeah, are man. bombarding them. Yeah, what, what do you say to them? You know, it's we, we know we, what we do in real life. You know, we know the work that we put in in real life, um, you know, in this building, you know, wherever that building is, you know, whether it's Green Bay, Kansas City, Buffalo, um, you know, the, the, the adversity that you had to battle to get to where you are today, you know, none of those fans will never understand that. You know, so those are the things that you kind of just got to remember, you know, and these people don't know, you know, what you really went through, you know, to how to, to get where you are now. Um, I'll ask about the Buffalo Bills. And again, like, I, I got to be careful how I frame this because, you know, earlier we were talking about Brandon Ayuk and some of the stuff he's doing on social media. Is, you know, I know people don't like the word diva, but like Stefan Diggs has went through a lot in Buffalo yeah. and they kind of moved on from him and now they bring you in and you guys aren't the same receiver but it's almost like a breath of fresh air. Look, look at how calm you are. <laughs> you bringing up big drops. Like that's pretty cool. That uh, I guess. How how do you walk into a locker room knowing you're kind of replaced? I know Gabe Davis is gone too, but like you're you're now one of the guys. You're one of the you big know, man. It's I, it, I never really look at it like that, man. Because I, I went through the same thing when I went to Kansas City and Tyreek Hill left. That's right. You know. <laughs> so um, I just come in there and be myself. You know, whatever that version of myself is that's needed. For, for the team to help them win, you know that that's what that's what it is. Um, I've never really tried to say, oh yeah, I want to come in and replace a guy. You know, I think one of the best things that I ever learned from Devonte was just come in and, and be yourself. You know, don't try to come in and, and emulate me. Don't try to come in and emulate Cobb. You know, um, you know Larry Fitzgerald, my favorite receiver growing up. Don't try to be that guy. Um, just just be yourself. Cause that's what got you here. Um, and so just going in and and being myself is, is the goal man It's never about you know what anybody else did before me or after me and man It's just all about you know who I am and be the best version of myself. Uh, it wasn't on the question list, but um, Is sauce Gardner the best cornerback in the NFL because you're gonna be going up against him twice this season. Nah, man. I think um, I think Sneed is uh, the best corner really league, man um, just being You know with him for two years and yeah. just watching him play man. I think that he just has a, a very unique skill set you know, um, that a lot of guys just, just don't have. Um, the physical nature? Yeah, man, and just his 
his intelligence. You know, I'm excited to see what he does, you know, in Tennessee. Um, but I think, I think he's one of the best corners in the league, man. I'll ask, last question is, um, you played the Dolphins in the coldest game, I think, in like yeah. NFL playoff history. Go ahead, tell us. Yeah, man, <laughs> Were you was, one of those uh, guys going out shirtless before the game or no? Nah, man. <laughs> um, you know, I'm a Florida boy, so um, <laughs> I'm trying to stay inside as long as I can and, until this uh, kickoff time. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it was definitely inhumane for, uh, for us to be out there, man. It was, it was cold. Uh, but, you know, obviously it was, it was cold for them too. You know, mm. uh, we lived in it in Kansas City, so we had a bit of advantage there. Um, but, yeah, it was, uh, it was brutal. Um, but, you know, we, we got it over quick, and uh, we went on a nice little run to, you know, go on the road and, and beat Buffalo and then go and, and beat the Ravens, you know, and then ultimately win another Super Bowl. Amazing playoff run. Congrats, uh, Marquez, that. Valdez, Scanlon. Great stuff. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.